The Montemoros expedition was a controversial and decisive element of the Texas Revolution. The port city of Montemoros by the late 1820s was the third most important port in Mexico, located in the state of Tamaulipas, approximately 31 miles from the Gulf of Mexico. This bristling port served much of northeastern Mexico and received a significant amount of international traffic from the United States and Europe. The port also made a substantial source of revenue, totaling at $100,000, and when the Texas Revolution began in October 1835, capturing the port could help defray the cost of the revolution and could take the war out of Texas. The idea of the Montemoros expedition probably originated from the Tejanos of the Trans Nueces area, together with the Federalist Insurrectionists of Tamaulipas and Coahuila, who were hoping to amass under Mexican General José Antonio Mexia, who had led a successful expedition against centralist forces in Montemoros in 1832. However, the expedition traces its origins to an October 15, 1835 letter to Texian Army Commander Stephen F. Austin from Philip Dimmitt, newly appointed Commandant of the Texian garrison at Presidio La Bahia in Goliad. Dimmitt proposed that his forces be sent to capture Fort Libatilan, a small Mexican army base south of Goliad, giving the Texians a strategic advantage to attack Montemoros and hopefully encourage Federalists in the Mexican interior to join the Texian revolt. Dimmit was a member of the De Leon colony and had many contacts among the Texians and Tejanos of the Victoria, Goliad, Refugio, and San Patricio areas. Indeed, Dimmit probably channeled more information about Mexican plans and movements to the provisional government than any other single source. He was convinced that a Texas maneuver against the centralists at Montemoros would be approved by the majority of the people in that section of the country and would be forthcoming very likely in late November or early December 1835 and suggested that General Lorenzo de Zavala lead the assault. When Dimmitt presented his plan to General Stephen F. Austin, who was also fond of the idea, was more immediately concerned with assaulting centralist forces under General Martin Perfecto de Cos at San Antonio. Austin also stressed that the expedition had to be led by native Mexicans such as Mexia to prevent charges of national or racial motivation. Nothing will aid Texas so much as an expedition from New Orleans against Montemoros under General Mexia, Austin wrote, because Mexia's success could help cost Cosa's defeat by cutting off funds, troops, and supplies to San Antonio. Austin also suggested that Zavala should publicize the project in the United States because even a rumor of such a thing would keep centralist troops from being sent to Texas. However, Mexia, who was in New Orleans at the time, was instead preparing for an expedition to attack the Mexican port town of Tampico, and Zavala had turned down Dimmitt's offer because of ill feeling. Nevertheless, in late 1835, Dimmitt pursued his plan against Montemoros, which by November had also gained the support of the General Council. When Dimmitt's forces captured Fort Libatitlan on November 4, 1835, this gave the Montemoros expedition a strategic advantage because this victory removed the only remaining fortified centralist position between San Antonio and Montemoros. However, by mid-November 1835, Dimmitt began to doubt that the Federalists of the Interior would be able to sustain the Constitution of 1824 with the Texans, and expressed his concern to Austin that an attack on Montemoros would likely be opposed by the citizens of northern Mexico. His concerns stemmed from his learnings of Mexican plans and movements through his contacts, and from his confrontation with James Grant and newly freed former Governor José María Viesca, and if things couldn't get any worse, Mexia's expedition to Tampico had ended in failure. Mexia's defeat convinced Dimmitt, along with Sam Houston and Austin, that an expedition against Montemoros might suffer the same fate. The Goliad commander had also begun to favor complete independence for Texas, a move that would antagonize those claiming loyalty to the Constitution of 1824 and who supported the Montemoros project. But, nevertheless, Dimmitt continued to stress the advantages of occupying such a strategic position as Montemoros, and his contacts encouraged him to trust that Federalist cooperation would be forthcoming. By this time in mid-March, the consultation would meet at San Felipe de Austin and would form a provisional Texas government headed by Henry Smith and would also create a new regular army with Sam Houston as his commander-in-chief. However, Houston would be required to raise his army from scratch rather than take over the volunteer force commanded by Austin. 
The council, including Governor Smith, supported the idea of the expedition, and Governor Smith would order Houston to begin preparations for the expedition, and the council, without consulting Smith, would also ask Edward Burleson to oversee an expedition as well. However, after he had expelled all Mexican forces from Texas in the Siege of Bayar, he had submitted his resignation to Smith and left Francis W. Johnson in charge of the remaining Texan troops. Houston would begin the necessary preparations for the expedition and would write to James Bowie, who was in Goliath at the time, ordering him to lead the expedition. The next day, Houston would order David B. McCabe, Almazan Houston, and John A. Wharton to go to New Orleans as Texas agents to purchase supplies and send them to Campano Bay, which was Houston's proposed point of debarkation. James C. Neal was then ordered to superintend San Antonio, while William Barrett Travis and James W. Fanion were ordered to recruit volunteers at San Felipe de Austin and Valesco. However, Bowie left Goliath for San Antonio before Houston's orders even reached him. As the controversy in the provisional government began to heat up over whether to remain loyal to the Constitution of 1824 or declare independence from Mexico, Governor Smith began to become wary of working with most Mexican citizens, saying, I consider it bad policy to fed out or trust Mexicans in any manner connecting with our government, as I am well satisfied that we will, in the end, find them hostile and treacherous. But the council, hearing reports that other Mexican states were near revolt, on December 25, 1835, would authorize the Montemoros expedition. By this time, Franklin W. Johnson had also begun to organize his own Montemoros expedition, completely independent from Houston's. Burleson's letter to organize an expedition had been forwarded to Johnson, and he decided to take up the mantle. He began to recruit volunteers at San Antonio, and would partner up with James Grant on December 30th. Johnson later traveled to San Felipe de Austin to get the expedition approved by the council, and when he arrived in Austin, James Bowie was also there to meet with the council to take command of Houston's expedition. Governor Smith objected to both Johnson and Grant's leadership because he distrusted their motives and allegiances, and there is evidence that the two men were attempting to join with Mexican liberals to establish a republic of northern Mexico, independent of both Mexico and Texas, an objective that was apparently no secret to Austin, Houston, or Dimmitt. But the council later overrode Smith's opposition and authorized Johnson's command on January 6, 1836. Both Grant and Johnson decided to mobilize at the Nueces River at San Patricio and were able to enlist 200 volunteers at San Antonio. However, only 100 men were left to garrison San Antonio under the command of Lieutenant Colonel James C. Neal. Johnson had stripped the Alamo of all of its supplies and the majority of its men, leaving the Alamo vulnerable. When Grant passed through Goliad, he claimed superior rank over Dimmit and proceeded to strip Presidio La Bahia of her supplies and all of her horses, and when Grant threatened to do battle with Dimmit's garrison because of Dimmit's independence flag that was flying over the Presidio, Dimmit resigned in protest. Hearing of the developing crisis, Houston attempted to resolve the situation and left for Goliad. He would arrive on January 14, 1836, just in time to meet with Dimmit as he was leaving Goliad with some of his men. Houston entered Presidio La Bahia and on January 16th spoke to all the remaining troops and tried to talk them out of continuing the campaign. However, Grant's men could not be dissuaded and headed for Refugio, where Johnson was to join the expedition, and Houston went along with them. James Fanion and William Ward had also gathered a force of 200 men, and on January 24th they departed and landed at Campano Harbor and marched out to join Johnson's men at Refugio on February 4th. When they arrived at Refugio, Houston again tried to persuade the men, and this time his efforts were met with success, as most of the men decided to break with the Montemoros expedition. Fanion would take most of the men and would depart for Goliad, making Presidio La Bahia his headquarters. However, Grant and Johnson continued their quest towards Montemoros. As co-commanders with about 70 to 100 men, they went as far as San Patricio to gather horses for the expedition. Grant was informed that Mexican Captain Nicholas Rodriguez and a small company formerly from Fort Libatilan was in the area. Grant confronted and overtook them, confiscating the horses and took the men as prisoners to San Patricio. 
Within a few days, the prisoners had escaped, alerting nearby Mexican forces, and when Mexican General Jose de Urrea crossed into Texas from Montemoros on February 18, 1836, he led a decisive defeat to both Grant and Johnson's forces at the battles of San Patricio and Agua Dulce. Grant was killed at the Battle of Agua Dulce, and Johnson nearly escaped Urrea's forces at the Battle of San Patricio and would get word to James Fanion that the Mexican army was in South Texas. The Montemoros expedition was the most disastrous component of the Texas Revolution. It brought to light the division between Governor Smith and the Council in the Provisional Government, which essentially left Texas without governmental leadership during the critical months of late January and February 1836. It revealed the disadvantages of asserting independence for Texas instead of remaining loyal to the Constitution of 1824. It also showed the lack of realism in the thinking of Texans, who discounted reports warning of Santa Ana's approaching army while relying on rumors of great numbers of volunteers arriving from the United States and, more importantly, massive support by the Federalists in the Mexican interior. Thus, this event also contributed to the defeats at the Battle of the Alamo, Refugio, Coledo Creek, and also led to the Goliad Massacre. 